Football Props in Week 17 Recap Edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. For boosted same game parlays to live in-game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Sign up today, bet $100, and get a $100 free bet at sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash winbet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T. State restrictions apply. Welcome, everyone, to the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, Real Money Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dong. Oh, Dan Jones, 12 and 4 ATS and playoff bound. Sorry to, sorry for your losses. Oh, it's all right. I'm, I'm not, you know. Again, we have to win one of these three games. Oh, no, no. I was referring to Nick Foles. It looked like a really brutal oh. injury. I know you're close with him. Well, I yeah. just wanted to and pay classless, my respect. Classless organization doing a snow angel while, <laughs> while a guy is in gut wrenching oh. pain right next to you. I, I mean, they carted Nick Foles off like the hero he is. That's the only way he could have beat the Colts. You had to take out Nick Foles with a dirty hit, kidney shot right to poor Nick Foles, <laughs> took him out. And congrats, like, Frank. First off, I want to be the first one to say congratulations. Hmm. You won the Super Bowl, hence why the Giants dumped the Gatorade. I mean, all time jinx, Ryan. It, it, where where is the boat trip going to be going this year? I think they were celebrating him punching his ticket to the playoffs in their first year. I, I don't have a problem with celebrating clinching a six seed in the playoffs. When you were counted out, you had 60% of your money to spend, spend and your quarterback was a piece of shit as per mainstream media. Although I will say a lot of Dan, a lot of people coming out of the woodwork who are supposedly backing Dan Jones this year. So uh, those people can go fuck themselves. I, I know, I know that it was a very thin crowd. So uh, shout out to the few of us who are on the, on the wagon. And, and yeah, no, I, I mean, the, the Colts are fucking horrible. I, I don't, why, I, I, I'm glad Nick Foles is out so you can stop wasting your money betting on them. No, I picked them, right? I didn't actually bet them. Uh, it was more just for entertainment. This is a, an entertainment podcast, Ryan, in case you, you aren't aware, we are here to have fun. Uh, Flat Earth Oracle saying he called Dan Jones over Kyler Murray preseason. Wow. Uh, Jordan Herbert saying Thibodeau doing snow angels next to Nick Foles dead body was the funniest thing all year. Yeah, Sean, and come on. Disgusting act. Sean, you love that move. Come on. If I, you, you're, if, if it wasn't your big dick, uh, brethren, you would have loved that move. Just a total, that's what you want to see your defensive ends doing. Like kill, kill the man. And then, uh, you know, dance on his grave or whatever they say. Uh, Matty Ice 423 saying, How about Mike Tomlin over seven and a half wins? It was the lock of all locks. We never doubted it. We were all over the Steelers. Steelers, uh, again, I think we the handicap was he could even have a losing season and still go over seven and a half wins. The annoying thing is, Ryan, our, our Steelers to win the division that was like 10 to 1. Man, if, if TJ Watt doesn't get hurt, does or or if maybe just pick it plays a little bit earlier or Watt misses maybe a few less games, it, fe- it felt like that was right in the mix. Or if Lamar realized his best negotiation tactics was not playing and letting everyone see what <laughs> Tyler Huntley looks like. It is. I mean, you know, he, I, really like <laughs> now he's going to get like the new strain of COVID. He, I mean, it, it really is diabolical to just keep um, losing these uh, games or, or keep not playing and, and losing the games. Oh, man. Uh, what do we got here? Well, also, and breaking news from that game, I did hit Isaiah Likely first touchdown again. Nice job, uh, Sean. Follow, follow us on Twitter at Sean T. Green at Gambling Podcast. 30 to 1 for Isaiah Likely. I didn't even give out any sort of DGen stuff for that game because I couldn't. 
I honestly couldn't think of anyone who was going to have two touchdowns in that game or, or anything like that. It's those, those AFC North games are just classic, super ugly. Um, it, it was a no touchdown. That was the DJ bet. And it, it yeah. zoomed into my brain for a second, but you know, I, I didn't put it down, so I don't want to take credit for it, but it would have been a nice sweat. All right, here we go. We'll recap uh, the entire NFL Week 17, then give out our Monday night props, including a D-Gen play and some first touchdown bets as well. Before we get to that, breaking news, we have a winner of the Sports Gambling Podcast mini helmet. Uh, these things are awesome. I highly recommend them. They, we do have free shipping for the mini helmets. And uh, yeah, fifty nine ninety nine. But these things are awesome, and it's got a sweet little helmet bumper on the back that says "Let It Ride." And again, free shipping uh, to the uh, United States. Kramer, please announce uh, who the winner is of the mini helmet contest. Can you play the random generator, please? All right, hailing from the lands beyond the internet. Not actually sure where this guy came from, but. Uh, late currently maybe in the, t- in the, in the top spot of the YouTube username, power rankings, Benedict Dan told, Oh, awesome a helmet. Let's go. You can just see him going to battle with his helmet on going to war. And uh, I, that's, that's the next step, Sean. We need some Sean and Ryan bobbleheads. <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, of course we did. Nagels Bagels did leave the review pointing out that we had promised him a mini helmet at some point. We will get you that mini helmet. Just uh, DM Kramer and he'll, uh, he'll well, get that taken care of. For DM you. Kramer. Kramer was the asshole not paying back the poker, the poker buy-in or whatever the fuck. Hey, you're looking to get down on some action live in-game betting. The win, build your own bet. The parlay wheel. Spin that thing. It's going to be awesome. SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash win bet. Bet big, win bigger. Get that $100 free bet. State restrictions apply, but bet 100 get a $100 free bet. And reduce juice on bowl games. Day of bowl games. Get some sweet reduced juice. Going to the Rose Bowl. Just got my tickets. If you're going to the Rose Bowl, hit me up in the Discord. Uh, maybe we could meet up, shotgun a beer, talk about how Colby's banned from the Rose Bowl. SportsGamblingPodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T bet big win bigger off subject change terms conditions at winbet.com. I'm 21 or older. I'm president of the state where we play through windows available. If you're somebody who knows a game of problem, call 1 800 522 4700. All right, here we go. Cowboys 27, Titans 13. Again, for me, the big takeaway was Dax still sucks. Two interceptions. One was egregiously bad. Uh, how Zeke couldn't get much going on the run game. I mean, the Titans were resting their starters and still gave them a bit of a game here. I don't know why the Cowboys fans are so excited about this win. Uh, but the big takeaway for me is that Dobbs, uh, looks like a player like he to me he seems and, and maybe it was just like one game nothing to lose but I if I'm the Titans I'm starting Josh Dobbs uh, next week against or this week against the Jags I mean it gives you a chance to win uh, certainly you could argue the Cowboys were letting down here I guess but yeah it's a massive uh, Ma- let down spot but Malik Willis just not I, this this makes Malik Willis look even worse a guy you basically signed off the street a couple weeks back is going to be able to come in and look better than you uh, I mean, if I, I'm with you, if I'm Vrabel, I don't know how you don't start Dobbs. I, I f- fuck the rookie's confidence. Who gives a shit? Like you're trying to get in the playoffs, right? Yeah. Yeah. 100%. You're trying to get in, win and get in and you got to go with Dobbs. He, he just looked better. I know it's a small sample size, but come on. Malik Willis has looked bad. Falcons 20 cards, 19. I didn't even bother setting up uh, the teardrop, Ryan. Uh, for this game. I had, I just had no interest in going. I mean, first off I was dealing with the power being out. So it was like a scramble, you know, making coffee using a fucking jet boil um, hung over his shit. I, I, I just didn't have it in me to set up the teardrop as well for this cards Falcons game. 
uh, seemed like a pretty ugly game. I, I Again, I still don't know a world where Desmond Ritter should have been favored by six points, even against the shitty David Blau, who, you know, was fine. 24, 40, 222. <clears throat> James Conner got a lot of work. Trey McBride. Of all the weeks for Trey McBride to finally go off, it was this one where I didn't have him in any sort of sweet anytime touchdown bets. But uh, again, both these teams suck. Not a huge, no, no huge takeaways. Uh, I mean, came down to the YouTube kicker, as Decker yeah. would, would call it. I mean, I guess it was lower scoring than I anticipated, and and Hollywood wasn't in much of the doghouse as I thought he would be. But it does. It, I got to be honest, this. I was do, I was doing up in the mountains enjoying elevation today, Sean. And I, I this is not this is a deprioritized re, recap. I, I I'm not watching this one first. I'll tell you that. Dolphins twenty one, Pats twenty three. I think we unfortunately picked it at Patriots minus two and a half, uh, which was really brutal because you know the Dolphins get that backdoor touchdown again. Super super ugly game. Teddy Bridgewater gets knocked out, which he I feel like every game. So he just gets knocked out. Poor guy can't stay in the game. Skylar Thompson uh, looks shitty. Um, he threw an interception. I think Bridgewater threw the pick six. I think he got injured on the stiff arm, which is super humiliating. Uh, Patriots win the game. Don't look good. That just kind of seems to be their MO right now, but they're, they're sniffing around. They got a decent shot at the playoffs. Uh, Dolphin season's over. And uh, for some reason, my mentions have been super quiet about really? my my dolphins uh hate. Well, that's cuz you got you turned into a a Tua stand halfway through the season randomly. I uh, look I I uh it seems like the super conference known as the AFC like is is are people just like backing into the 7th spot? I I for being such a super conference, I'm a little shocked at how weak the 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 7 seeds going to be. It, uh, none of these teams want to be playoff teams. They're not playoff teams. The AFC has some really good teams, but they don't have seven playoff teams. Saints 20 Dolphin or Eagles 10. I mean, you know, this uh, Gardner Minshew, uh, God bless him is showing the world why Jalen hurts should be the MVP in the league. Like the, the offense just isn't the same. Defense got pushed around a little bit in the first half, but they only let up 13 points. I can only be so mad at that defense. Uh, D line played really well, but I mean, he chucked up one to AJ Brown. Other than that, he was just praying and spraying. He was all over the place. Play calling wasn't great. Um, they got the, uh, I mean, Moose Johnson got enraged when they got uh, their touchdown called back for a phantom holding call I, again. Eagles, bad game, back-to-back losses. Uh, the good news is we got the Giants this week at home. I know the Giants will – it's going to be a tough game. It's a division game. Um, Giants, they don't need the game for their playoff seating, but um, they will be starting all their starters. They're not going to rest any guys. That would mess with the integrity of the game. And I'm looking forward to an epic battle come this Sunday. Hmm. Interesting predicament we've – found ourselves in Sean. <laughs> no, I mean, if you rest your starters, you're impacting other teams, playoff chances. And that's something the organization has vehemently said they would never do. So I'm looking for Dan Jones, Jalen hurts Sunday. It's uh, it's going to be a great game. Huh? Interesting take from you as well. Uh, the, the memo must've come out early. I look, I, I would prefer if they didn't rest anyone as well. I don't, I don't give a shit if they have the, the six seed locked up. Keep the momentum going. Things are clicking the right way against shitty teams. So what better way to fuck over the Eagles than rip the one seat away from them, hand it to the 49ers or whoever. Can the Vikings still get it? I I know. I think it's, well, I think, yeah, I think, um, no, Vikings can't. I think it's 49ers would obviously need to win. Then they would need Dallas and Eagles to lose. I think that's their path. Um, but yeah, it should be a great NFC battle coming up next week. Speaking of your giants, Ryan, 38, 10 over the Colts, Danny Jones running all over the place, dumping the Gatorade. Um, congrats. Won a lot of people, a lot of money this weekend. Uh, I, I, will he be, is he, he's not on the winning best ball mania. We don't know yet, I guess, but could he be on the winning best ball mania quarterback? Well, I would, I would imagine 
because it is Bills Bengals that like there still has to be probably a decent yeah. amount to be decided. Right. Yeah, and- I imagine you don't get to the best ball championship without maybe a little Josh Allen or T Higgins in there, or maybe even Joe Mixon. Cause he had that five touchdown game. I, I, I don't know. I haven't really looked at it, but um, yeah, you know, fantasy playoff wise, he, he had a m- massive game. Yeah. And, and, and I, I, once again, just took care of business, punched the ticket, uh, made the game next week much more interesting from a fan perspective. And, you, you know, again, first season, we're, we're, they weren't supposed to make the playoffs. They weren't supposed to win more than seven games. Uh, first year coach. They didn't have a, a they didn't have a team with talent because the previous GM was a fucking idiot. So, yeah, I mean, awesome first season. And like I said last week, Dan Jones will be the quarterback in the New York, New York Giants next year. Looking forward to it. Uh, I know. You, you should be. <laughs> I love the nerve. You're nervous, Sean. This is horrible. And you're going to let the Cowboys win the division. It's fucking gross, dude. It's no, we're going to we're going to beat your ass and use that as a nice tune up game to go into the playoffs. Fucking disgusting. I don't like the Giants. So you're torn. You either help the Cowboys or you, uh, what are you supposed to do? It's you you're beat the Eagles. You, no, you, you strap up, you play all your guys and you know, you come in there. You're not going to, you're not going to mess with the integrity of the game. That's what if, thing you know. if, uh, if the social team could dig up the clips of Sean uh, talking about the Ned, Nate Sudfeld incident from a couple of years back, it'd be great. It just, it really paired nicely with this take. Oh, well, I, I don't have a problem guys resting their starters or getting looks at quarterback. I, I never said, you know, I never accused an organization of messing with the integrity of the game. Look, looking to get Tyrod. We're seeing if we can maybe flip Tyrod for a second, third rounder next year. So we got to get him some reps. I wouldn't have a problem with it, but the Giants, they've they have said they would never do that. Uh, Buccaneers, 30. Panthers, 24. This is horrible. I mean, how did the Panthers blow this game? Tom Brady winning people uh, Millie makers. He, it was just every other play was just a bomb to Mike Evans. All that touchdown regression he was sitting on just exploded. Um, we did have a model that said always fade Sam Darnold on the road. Yes. Although I don't even, I don't think it was really him. I, I underestimated not having JC Horn back there. I was like, ah, you know, Brady's deep ball isn't shit anymore. Um, but he just went off. He, he heard all the haters and uh, yeah, 432 yards passing three touchdowns. Mike Evans, 10 for two Oh seven, three touchdowns. Chris Godwin, nine for one twenty. That it was just it was an insane game. It was it was very weird. It was like ugly for a while, and then just bombs started coming out of nowhere. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems like this team has zero plan. Honestly, this the the whole narrative that this is the coaches suck makes more sense every week. It's like once Tom Brady figures out what's going on out on the field, he's able to adapt. And once again, they're they're down early, but yet they some. They wait, they find a way to miraculously come back. And, you know, I guess if we zoomed out a little bit, Carolina was never going to beat uh, Sam Darnold was never going to beat Tom Brady for a division, a, a playoff berth. Come on. So yeah, we, we get to, we get to see Tom Brady get put down in the playoffs by the Cowboys. And no, this is excellent. Sean Cowboys. Well, uh, your Eagles better not fuck this up. Otherwise, we get ultimate, ultimate symmetry retribution where the Eagles get to go back to Tampa, back to the scene of the crime. You're not even thinking about that? Um, I mean, I'm optimistic about this game against okay. the Giants. It's going to be a big game. It's going to be a tight game. But, um, yeah, I'm feeling good. Jalen Hurts is coming back. Is he? Chiefs. Oh, yeah, 100%. Okay. Nice. Chiefs, 27. Broncos, 24. Never in doubt. Close your eyes special. Nice, uh, nice win for the close your eyes special. Now six and three. I mean, this was just classic uh, Broncos hanging around, f- fighting hard, and then Russell Wilson still finding ways to fuck this game up. It, it was pretty impressive to see. Like they had so much momentum, they had that new ca- new coach bump, and they still, still completely blew it. It was really impressive. What What do you think? Like so. Like what? What's the story this off season with Russ? What are What are we hearing? What are they going to tell us? Or do you think oh, they try to get rid of him? Sort of like a labrum thing or something. So you don't think that somehow the new owner like finds a way to get Russ to retire to give him, <laughs> get that money back? He's going to just start endorsing like Walmart supplements. I don't know. I, I, he's he looks really bad, but I think they. 
think you just got to run it back with a, um, I mean, maybe you're just paying your backup quarterback $40 million. I, I don't know. They're really in a tough spot. Close your eyes. Special goes to six and three ATS on the season, Sean. Oh yeah. Hell yeah. Yep. Lions 41 bears, 10 bears got out to a 10, nothing lead and just completely collapsed. Um, interesting game fantasy wise. Cause it seemed like, um, and Nate Sudfeld did get into the game shot to Nate Sudfeld. Jamal Williams, uh, went off 22 carries, 144 yards, got a touchdown as well. I'm on raw. It's weird. Like they lines put up a ton of points and really moved the ball, but didn't like, if you had the Jared Goff stacks, I don't think you did that great. No. Yeah. I mean, he did have three touchdowns, but I, I don't know. It didn't get to the 300 yards. Um, I'm on raw at a quiet game. And then Brock Wright had two uh, receiving touchdowns. So Shane Zilstra last week with three receiving touchdowns and then Brock Wright with two uh, this time. So again, kicking myself for not seeing the Brock Wright angle, but um, yeah, I don't know. The bears are pretty bad. So I walked to the window in Tahoe, of course, one of my locks lions. And I just put a mass. I, I did some crazy parlays. I'm on vacation, having some fun. And I put a massive, massive money line parlay, Giants, Packers, Lions. And uh, it, it was it, it felt gross as I was leaving. I, As you know, Sean, I rarely go super heavy on the Giants. But, uh, yeah, so I haven't walked back over to the beautiful uh, Harvey's Casino, Lake Tahoe, South Lake Tahoe, California, but or I guess Nevada. But uh, I'll be walking out with a heavy bag of cash. Shout out to them. And the Lions, because I like I told you, easy lock, easy lock. Browns twenty four, Commanders ten. Carson Wentz complete collapse. Oh man, he is so bad. Uh, three interceptions, sixteen to twenty eight. You almost feel bad for Commanders fans. Almost. Uh, my, this is my bad. I we were even talking about. I, really, Rashawn, we're going to take Carson Wentz laying the. Really, Sean, we. And we never, well, got I mean, I, I didn't like Deshaun Watson on the road either. It was, it was really a Sophie's choice. I thought, um, I thought, I thought the commander's run game would be able to carry him, but shout out to Carson Wentz, who just found a way to fuck that up as well. And then, uh, Ron Rivera making a complete ass of himself going, Hey, if he, uh, the, the reporter goes, Hey, you know, if, uh, Green Bay wins in the afternoon. You guys are eliminated from the playoffs. Do you think you'll start Sam Howell? And he's like, wait, we can be eliminated this week? <laughs> he had no idea. So uh, RIP to the commanders. They have been eliminated from the playoffs. So the dream of getting the entire NFC East in has gone by the wayside. And, and our, you know, we'll get to it, but our hero is very, very alive. And I, I forgot to mention in the Lions lock of segment where I was just gloating. Again, the Bears, it's been like 11 weeks since I've seen a Bears fan in my mentions. I mean, it's it, what's really crazy, guys, is you talked all this shit when you were three and three or three and four, and you're going to end up being three and 14, just like I predicted. It's an all time collapse. Jags 31, <laughs> Texans three. Um, yeah, I, I, Trevor Lawrence, no passing touchdowns. They just ETN just broke off a bunch of big runs. They they did it really all on the ground. Um Jamichael Hasty had a touchdown. They just kind of kicked the Texans' asses. I I can't make sense of this Texans team. Like, why were they playing so hard these other weeks and then a against a division opponent at home, they completely shit the bed. Makes no sense. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it, you look at the box score and it's like, uh, all right. So we did see beat hard. Uh, Etn only had nine carries. Hasty's had more carries than ET like everything about the handicap was right. And yet still they, they blew like, like I mentioned could happen. They still blew the roof off. So I, yeah, I guess lo lovey it's barbecue time in Texas. Let's go. <laughs> Brent Prager asking for some Monday night football locks. We'll get to those in just a second. Finishing up the recap. Um, uh, 46 mantra two saying my commanders under eight wins lives on baby. Uh, Dick Puncher, again, all time YouTube name, uh, checking in. Rogers manifesting giant dick punches to all those who stand in his way. Um, yeah, I mean, let's get to that game. Uh, Vikings 17, Packers 41. I thought this would be a game. I thought the Vikings would hang around. I felt weird laying three and a half with the Packers, but they, they really just destroyed uh, the Vikings, you know. Um, Gritty man himself, Justin Jefferson. You like that? You like that? 
held to one catch 15 yards. So Jair Alexander kind of had the last laugh. Couldn't get Dalvin Cook going. Turnovers, just kind of nightmare game for the for the Minnesota Vikings. Again, you throw three interceptions, you're gonna be uh, screwed. Yeah, no. Again, I watched Kirk Cousins a couple of weeks ago. He's trying to throw those intercept. I mean, him getting pushed in the end zone was just magical in the game earlier on that pick six. And Aaron and Jones yet- had a huge rushing game. I did not see that coming. Fourteen for one eleven. You know, he had been dealing with an ankle thing. I thought AJ Dillon, if anyone went off rushing the ball would be him but he really carried the team i'm sure they were the eagles did this to the vikings early in this but the giants were pushing him down five like yeah. five yards down the field so it's it seemed i mean honestly like fingers crossed the giants could get to catch the vikings in the first round of the playoffs 49ers 37 raiders 34 raiders get the cover send the 49ers into overtime maybe brock purdy is not dan marino um he did he did have some uh <laughs> They ended up missing the field goal, but the the play uh, right before the the field goal that uh, Gould missed uh, before the end of regulation, he just like was getting blitz and just chucked it up, got hit, and somehow IU came down with it. Um, Christian McCaffrey did end up having a big game. I I thought they, I don't know, I just didn't think he would get like this many carries. I guess there was really a game, and they were. Uh, they were really pushing to win. Ayuk had a nice game. Uh, Jared Stidham, though, looked good. I mean, he did throw two picks, but 365, three touchdowns. He hung in the pocket, delivered some nice throws. Devontae Adams went off for 153 yards. Uh, Waller came back from the grave. So I think if you're a Raiders fan, you at least uh, yeah, have some decent takeaways there. Cover was a- never in, in doubt. Maybe you're apologizing to the organization. Maybe Derek Carr does suck. Maybe he was holding your franchise back. If Jared Stidham could look this good in a in a post uh, car goes home with a tantrum bump, then yeah, who knows? I, I yeah, I mean, this is why Brock Purdy can lose any game in the postseason because they they went all the way to the end and like in classic Raider fashion. By the way, they lose a close game. We're, it's so annoying that we're going to be have to we're ha- going to have to talk about the positive regression coming to this team next year. <laughs> well, and uh, it's funny because it doesn't even include the the one score game regression thing doesn't even include that insane Patriots win that they had. Like that one actually broke their way. Oh yeah, you're um, right. <laughs> they've had some wild ass games. Seahawks twenty three, Jets six. Uh, I don't know. Jets. I thought they'd be able to do stuff against Se- this Seattle offense and Mike White. Clearly not the answer. Uh, hung in the pocket. Probably just hung in the pocket way too long. And uh, Seattle, I don't know, didn't look great, but they certainly, uh, Kenneth Walker. I, I I was surprised that the Jets were, um, it, you were, they were able to run on the Jets so well. That was a big surprise. And, yeah, I thought you'd get a little more fight out of this Jets team, but nice win for Seattle. Keep their playoff hopes alive. Uh, yeah, I thought you discredited the, like, disadvantage of the spot a little too much when we were handicapping this. And yeah, I guess this was like the problem with that jets team is the floor is so, so freaking low. Like they just, if they don't, if the defense doesn't show up and they don't get it, like once again, they don't get any quarterback play. This is what they look like a team that can lose 23 to six to the Seahawks. Yeah. Um, And by the way, Christian McCaffrey stole the big boy away from me and gave it to our guy, Link Calhoun in the waning minutes. So once again, I'd like someone to do the research. How many times am I going to finish second or third in this fucking thing? It's killing me. It's a winner. I, guess take all. I keep, I keep forgetting to enter. Definitely going to be in for week 18. Week 18 is wild for DFS. <laughs> it's like preseason Rams chargers chargers got the win, got the cover. Eh, you know, Baker kind of hit the brakes there. I, I don't know. It it Cam Akers still had a game, although he he also I don't know if you saw early in the game would have been like a sixty five yard touchdown, completely wide open, could have walked in the end zone, just hit him right in the hands, and he dropped it. Um, Chargers again, Chargers still like I don't know. Maybe I'm just a hater, but the offense still I'm still a little concerned. But Herbert's winning. Nice uh, nice cover here for the Chargers. Yeah, this felt a little bit like the um, like when the Clippers changed their changed their floor to, to Chargers. Charge. When the Clippers changed their floor to black and white, and said this is our town. 
Uh, the Chargers really wanted to make sure they, or sorry, the Clippers. The Cl- Chargers really wanted to make sure they won the battle for LA, just to get a, you maybe get a, a, another half an aisle of merch in the uh, grocery stores. <laughs> uh, Steelers sixteen, Ravens thirteen. I mean, you know, the these games are just the same every single time. It's it's always comes down to a field goal difference. Take the dog, take the points. Uh, Najee Harris. I mean, I, I think that was probably one of his best games. Pick it with a great drive there at the end. And um, yeah, they look, they, you know, just classic AFC North football. Pickett's like bad most of the game. And then he figures it out and he's good. It, it, there's some, there's some magic going on because most of the time he does not look good. And he's able to pull that one drive out. Fortunately, the defense still playing hard. Uh, yeah, he, he just he just looks like a rookie still, you know, like he'll have some moments and then it'll look like shit. But I mean, I, I don't know if you're a Steelers fan. I think you're talking yourself into like, hey, you know, uh, entire offseason, put some guys around him like, hey, uh, I don't know that when TJ Watts healthy, this team is pretty decent. And honestly, just I mean, if I was a Steelers fan, I would point to the fact that like when they need those drives, Pickett does d- deliver. So maybe he can grow from year one to year two. And, and you still have Tomlin. That's all that matters. Tomlin's just a dog. He's he's fucking working here. Dog. All right, let's get to our Monday night football props. Uh, hey, before we do that, shout out to Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code SGPN. Get an instant deposit bonus up to $100. Underdog Fantasy, promo code SGPN. They got uh, Battle Royale for like weekly uh, DFS style games. And then they have um, obviously their, their fantasy playoff competition. Uh, the best ball is super fun. Highly recommend that. You can draft it now, even though you don't know. Who's going to be in? What the seeds are? A lot of uh, fun opportunities. Underdogfantasy.com. Promo code SGPN. I'll kick it off. My first prop of the night. Give me Joe Burrow. Longest completion over 37 and a half yards. Joe Burrow in December at home. T. Higgins healthy. Um, We saw what the Dolphins receivers did to the did to the Bills secondary. Burrow's gone. He's hit this uh, over 37 and a half, three of his last four games. He's got Chase. He's got Higgins. Um, you know, he's got some guys that can do a little catch and run. So, yeah, give me Joe Burrow uh, dropping a bomb here at 37 and a half. I, 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 I really like, well, I shouldn't say this. I'm optimistically hoping for T. Higgins to have a huge game. I'm, I'm chasing a respectable amount of points. Not going to probably not in reach to to win the FFPC main event, Sean, unless T Higgins gets me like 75, but can finish in the top 10 with a, with like a 30 point performance. So hopefully he gets there. I'm not going to throw out his props because I don't, I, I don't want to jinx anything, but I do love his over for the yardage. He looks really good. I, he looks like healthy for the first time in a while, but my first prop, what do we, what do we always say about Josh Allen? Big games, Monday night against Joe Burrow. Uh, obviously, it's going to be a measuring contest. Josh Allen over 45 and a half rushing yards, period. And when he needs it, he gets it. This is a needed game. Give me Josh Allen. Go over the rushing yards. Yeah. Yeah, I, I could see him running the ball a ton. Uh, Ryan, to your point, T. Higgins over 69 and a half receiving yards. You know, he's had in his last five games, there were like two games where he didn't seem involved. One, I think he left early. I don't know. He's had those weird injuries, but now he seems completely healthy. And in three of those five games, he went over 114 yards. Like this guy has a massive ceiling and he's just really good. I, you know, him and him and chase like chases receiving yards is 81 and a half. Like why not just take T Higgins at 69 and a half? I, I think they're, way closer to equal than 12 yards difference. And I mentioned the dolphins, the dolphins receivers put up 204 yards against this bills defense. And that was at home in Buffalo with a little bit of weather. So I, I I like this T Higgins spot. Agreed. I'm just not going to, I'm I'm not jinxing anything, Sean. I'm I'm, this is the week. I, I, this is a juju move a hundred percent. All right. Second, second prop also a quarterback rushing prop because I'm going to do the same thing with Joe Burrow. I think he's he also understands that sometimes you got it when you need it you got to get it and I'm going to take over 12 and a half rushing yards for him. I think for him to have uh, two or three scrambles of 5 yards is very reasonable. So well it's a quarterback over rushing yards system play. 
Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind them. Uh, we'll get to first touchdown, but yeah, definitely putting Burrow in there. And I forget if I included Josh Allen or not. No, I didn't. This price is too oh, small, but it's still oh, pretty good at, at 10 to 1. Uh, for me, this prop I probably could have been my DGen only prop, Ryan. I'm just going to add on to it when we get there. But <laughs> Reggie Gilliam, anytime touchdown, 27 to 1. What? Oh my God. Yes. Reggie Gilliam, the uh, he's like a backup tight end, fullback, H-back guy. He has had one touchdown so far this season. The one touchdown came in Monday Night Football. Now you get an extra day to get a little creative with some of your goal line packages. Couldn't you just see 12 personnel out there? Gilliam, he had 27% snap share uh, last week. Now, some of that probably was the uh, game script against the Bears, but he had a catch for 12 yards. I think he gets a, I think he gets a red zone. Look, give it. I love the roll of the dice here. Just him to get a touchdown. And if, if the game gets out of hand, either way, he's going to see, um, you know, positive or negatively, he'll see some work. So there's a lot of ways he could get involved. Love him at 27 to one. I like the, that's an insane price. 27 to one for a guy who plays snaps to get a touchdown. All right. Uh, last prop for me, Sean, I, I almost went to the Josh Allen interception system play, but I didn't because I want to bet on both of these guys to get an interception. They uh, Burrow's been loose with the ball as well. Josh Allen been putting the ball in, in, in uh, risky spots. You can take over one and a half interceptions for both of these guys at plus one twenty. Guess Wait, guess who oh, likes so that combined two interceptions in the game? Yeah, well, by those quarterbacks specifically, I uh, guess it, it can't be like a a wide play, receiver. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, if you look at the game logs, these guys like to have multi interception games. Uh, again, I, I think I think this is going to be like the, this is a total. Hey, we're on Monday Night Football. This game matters. Uh, Got it, had to play a lot of quarterback props. So I think both of them make some mistakes, though. So over one and a half interceptions. I like it. I like it. All right, Ryan. Time for the first touchdown bets for me on the Bengals side. Give me Joe Burrow, 25 to 1. Uh, give me Mitchell Wilcox, 47 to 1. Now, uh, he was filling in for Hayden Hurst. Hayden Hurst says he's back, says he's 100%. I don't know. You know, whenever a guy goes out of his way to say he's a hundred percent, I'm a little skeptical. So I think the price for him is worth a little sprinkle. And then uh, Isaiah McKenzie, he has like a surprising number of red zone targets uh, for the bills there. I think he's even had five in the last six games. Love him at 25 to one for the bills. And then of course, Reggie Gilliam again, last uh, that Monday night game against the Titans. He was the guy getting the first touchdown, um, in that game. So, you know, he's got it in him. Maybe he's a Monday night touchdown guy, Reggie Gilliam to score the first touchdown, 110 to one. You're welcome, America. Wow. All right. Uh, Joe Burrow, Josh, Allen. it's system play for me. Josh Allen is on there at 10 to one. I, I don't know why you're not playing him. You know, the break, you know, the price, Sean, it's eight to one. He's, he's over that. So you got to play him. Joe Burrow, I wrote down 30 to one. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe I grabbed mine before yours, but same reason. I, I think these guys are, are wanting to get it done. And then I'm getting, I'm taking T Higgins. This is the area. I feel like I can't, I'm not jinxing him, putting him in the first touchdown kitty. He's 10 to one. And I, I had Reggie Gilliam written down with another guy who has the same price. And so I figured, you know, there's a chance that Sean takes one of these guys. It fits the model. I'll scratch Gilliam just to play the backup tight end for your Buffalo bills, Mr. Quentin Morris, who is sitting with, with the same odds as Reggie Gilliam, similar snap share last week as well. So uh, where there's a will, there's a way. And yeah, I, you need to you need to fire long on these bills receivers. Cause every it's almost like everyone's chalk. Yeah, it is. It is uh super chalky up top, but we've seen, you know, we've seen some, um, you know, we've seen some uh, we've seen them to that point of Reggie Gilliam getting that one earlier. We've seen them uh, go off the board here. So definitely some fun ones in there. Uh, Ryan, time for get out your hammers, get out your nails. Time to build some bets. Sports gambling podcast dot com slash win bets. 
Yoshi Ray saying Higgins legacy game loading. Well, hopefully for Kramer and uh, my props, that is the case. Kramer, what do you got uh, for the, the win? Build your own bet. The chat's going to think I'm copying them because flat earth Oracle says Josh Allen to rushing Ooh, touchdowns yeah, and yeah. Yoshi Ray says T Higgins legacy game. So what if they both scored two touchdowns? Will that get you a hundred to one? Let's go. So wait, sorry. Walk through it again. T Higgins, two touchdowns, Josh Allen, two touchdowns, hundred to one. Very simple. Let's fucking go. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is that what's more likely that or Reggie Gilliam catching the uh, first touchdown pass? According to the sports books, they're the same odds. Yeah. It, it, probably the uh, T Higgins and Josh Allen, both having two touchdowns, probably better real odds for me, Reggie Gilliam, anytime <laughs> touchdown parlayed with the Bengals to win 60 to one. Uh, classic counter correlation, classic and counter correlation. Maybe I even put in Reggie Gilliam. Let's see if the, Ryan, you may witness uh, me breaking a sports books uh, calculator because I, I want to see if I can do Reggie Gilliam first touchdown. You think God? Way. You think the God's eye power outage was not a targeted attack, Sean? Oh, it one hundred percent was. They're coming after us. I was trying to figure out Cole getting <laughs> Cole Beasley involved. Not a lot of Cole Beasley props out yet, um, but um, don't worry, I'm going to keep an eye on him. Okay, so if I if I up it to Reggie Gilliam first touchdown and the Bengals <laughs> plus one and a half hundred dollar wager. Ryan, just guess what that pays. Uh, uh, it's got to pay like millions. No, only 20, <laughs> only 28,000. I feel like that's not that good of a deal. It reminds me of the hundred dollar parlay. I put down on the Falcons giants and uh, Steelers to all win their division. Pretty damn, you know, all, all uh, not not the worst bet I made. It was a fun sweat. Was a fun sweat indeed. I'm telling you, TJ Watt doesn't get injured. We're we're cashing those Josh, those Steelers uh, division uh, division winners. All right, hey, we'll be back uh, Tuesday afternoon picking some college basketball games again. If you're going to the Rose Bowl, uh, hit me up in the Discord down to crack open some cold ones. Um, toss us a nice rating review. Always appreciate that. Download the SGPN app. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean Stacking the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Sean, we got to be very careful next week. We have an abundance of Closure Eye special. I, I believe we have uh, three Closure Eye specials next week. Kramer, let it ride.